morning oh that was a bit of a rough rough night i didn't get to sleep till late because i uploaded the video to youtube last night and it was censored um i won't play because of copyright on one of the songs that were playing in the background of the tattoo artists so i had to take all those videos and then dub over some of them i left the ones with the needle running um because i thought that might be okay but i think it is still censored there's still some copyright there somewhere but just be careful i just thought i'd mention it because i know we have to copyright when we cover with music and upload music etc etc but um this one but the whole thing was because it was playing in the background ah and then if I don't you can hear the doop, but about 3, 3.30 this morning, I woke up because my carbon dioxide monitor has got a four on it and it's beeping. So twice in 24 hours, I had a knife. I took a knife to it to try and get it open, but I couldn't. I didn't succeed on that one either, but obviously I couldn't take that to a garage to get help. So that's just been beeping. So I kind of shut the door, made the big mistake of picking up my phone. Don't do that, people, at half three in the morning because before you know it, it's half past four and you're even more awake. And then you're hungry. So um, I think it was about half past five. I made myself a salad wrap and a decaf cup of tea. But I also decided in that, do you know what? I'm not going to do intermittent fasting. I'm not going to count calories. I'm just going to try and eat healthily and just eat when I'm bloody hungry. Um, because I couldn't get back to sleep because I was hungry. So eventually at six o'clock, I did get back to sleep. I'm awake now. I had to set the alarm for eight because I've got to go to the hospital this morning for a clinic, a glaucoma clinic, because apparently I've got narrow angles in my eyes, both my eyes. Um, and I just thought I'd mention this because apparently they need to keep a check on them, but they can very suddenly close. So if you ever get really extreme, extremely painful eyes, if they go red, if you can't see and it really hurts, they said it is a medical emergency and you have to get yourself to somebody straight away you probably know that anyway but I just thought it was worth mentioning that is all I had planned today but then yesterday um I put two more appointments in my diary I'm gonna go and see Gabs uh, my beautiful in-law to be in-law to be daughter in-law to be um and she's gonna give me a nice much needed back massage I used to have massages every three weeks <clears throat> it used to keep me keep me going um but obviously when Andy got ill and that well twice um, bless I missed my appointments and I haven't kind of rescheduled and I probably need to get back into to doing that but Gabs is a massage therapist so um, or a beauty therapist and she does a damn good massage so I'm going to go and get that done today and then I'm going to go for dinner with Lisa who was um, late that <coughs> I used to work with many years ago and who volunteered and reached out to me when she knew I was writing a book to help me um edit it and she was one of my main editor really on my book so it's going to be great to catch up with her and if you didn't know what my book's called it's the A to Z of alcohol sobriety everything you need to know available worldwide on YouTube I'll put the link in the right up too but go and check it out check it out even and download a free copy if you want to for your kindle anyway that's enough tripping over my words gonna get my cup of tea done get up get dressed and get my tushy out the door i'm here at eye clinic i made it didn't think i was going to i was late leaving and on the way i started pain gaining stressing holding onto my handbars hard leaning forwards and then i realized that karina doesn't matter how stressed you are doesn't matter how much your ego is going i'm gonna be late i'm gonna be late i'm gonna be late then stressed about it is it gonna get there any quicker so just relax and enjoy the ride which i kind of sort of did the other thing that my ego has been playing up at this morning i noticed was that oh i'm nearly on 1300 followers on instagram and, and i'm like what's that about karina it doesn't matter you just want to make a difference to one person's life each day that's what matters and I know that some of you are watching this every day, a bit like a Netflix mini-series. Um, might not be a mini one though, it might go on for forever. Anyway, if you haven't subscribed already, then please do so. And don't forget to do like if you like it, dislike if you don't, and tell me. Please give me positive and um, constructive feedback in the 
in the comments below. Obviously one size doesn't fit all, what you might like, other people might not like, but it's good. Let's have some interaction going so I can do a bit more of what you do like and a bit less of what you don't maybe, if there's a consensus. Because I do know that I do tend to waffle on at times. My clinic went well, um, no glaucoma, so that's good, and my angles aren't too bad. So that's all very good news. I was just reflecting how many times, how much time I've spent at this hospital. This is James Paget Hospital in Galston. Um, spent loads of time on the ward here. Never worked here. Never been an inpatient here, I don't think, but spent lots of time here with both Jack, my son, and with Andy. Um, both of them mostly with sepsis. Um, so I just thought it'd be good just to quickly run through the signs and symptoms of sepsis and what is it? So sepsis is basically blood poisoning. So you know when we get an infection or something hurts, then all our um, white blood cells run to that area. So when it gets red or inflamed or swollen, that's our red blood cells protecting that area and fighting off the infection. And then sometimes it gets into our blood and it is a life-threatening condition. It happens very often with people on um, immunosuppressant medications, people with Crohn's like my son, and people like Andy who was on cancer treatment. So signs and symptoms are very high temperature, confusion, lack of consciousness sometimes, not always, but it can be like mentally not alert, not really with it, not really there. Um, sweating, profuse sweating. Don't worry about a rush. Rash, neither of them ever had a rash when they got sepsis. Um, have I said about the fast pulse? Um, basically very, very unwell. Um, nausea, vomiting sometimes, diarrhea. And, but I think the, the thing for me is the, the high temperature, the sweating, not really being able to think properly, not being able to lift your head off the pillow. And if that happens, 999. So I will put the sepsis um, things to look out for up here in a photograph in a bit as well. Now, um, I was supposed to be going to see Gabs for a massage now, but the caps are poorly. Um, problems with the caps, both of them have been injured really badly um, in the space of a week apart, the two of them, because we think it's because somebody has decided to put this really, really horrendous um, edging on their fence, which they say is for security. Um, it's not because the fence next to it hasn't got any on it. I think it's because they're fed up with cats and um, it's illegal because it's not high enough off the ground and but the police say it's the council the council then say it's highways and everyone's going round and round in circles but meanwhile um, expensive pet um, vet bills and also um, poorly cats which isn't nice has nasty nasty cuts so what do i do now i have to be in norwich in about three and a half hours I just had a lunch at the hospital which was kind of bit of sweet because it's what i used to eat when i was here with andy my mixed bean salad and chili crisps and coffee and cappuccino and his cappuccinos kept him going for many months you know both here and at bart's that's what he lived on he loved his cappuccinos um so yeah that was kind of reminiscent so I could go home, but I have to be in Norwich just so in three and a half hours anyway. So I think I might just go ride, um, go on a little journey on my little mobility scooter like, whee, there she is. She's the best mobility scooter in the world. I love my Riker. Talking of which, I rang 158 Performance and damn bless him, has fitted me in on Friday. So I'm gonna go and get um, the maintenance issue checked that needs doing, I think it's a CTV belt. So. Um, hopefully that'll be sorted on Friday. I'm gonna go for a little ride now though and um, I've just been spending some time on this thing called Journey, J-O-U-R-N-E-E, -E -E, I saw on Instagram. You've kindly put your details in and what sort of holiday you'd want and they come up with this surprise holiday for you. You don't know where you're going until you're going. <laughs> and I thought that might be quite fun, that might be pushing the boat out and going, yeah, I can go and do this, go somewhere, I don't even know where I'm going. Um, but the minimum price is like, 1050 quid or something for a week and i thought that's quite a lot because i could just end up in some little studio apartment no food nothing for a thousand pounds i don't know what do you think has anyone done this journey thing do you think that's a lot for one week because i'm sure i could get that for two weeks somewhere um but i suppose it's meant to be quite exciting and tailor-made i think it includes activities but i don't know perhaps they're optional extra extras who knows these things but if you do know then please let me know and then I might consider it further. Just editing, just editing. I said right blood cells a second time. I meant white blood cells. For all of you who are shouting white blood cells, it's white blood cells. 
that fight our infection. Our red ones carry our oxygen and iron around our body. So yes, it's white. Both times it should have been white cells. This is a little hospital. I literally followed my nose up the coast smelling the sea and the donuts and the ice cream. But I'm not giving in. I'm five days sugar free today, which is brilliant. So I'm going to keep going. Um, I just wanted to get some photos for you for a live, really, because it's been a bit poor the last couple of days. We've just done direct journeys and no photos. So hopefully you'll get some more photos. And that's how I like to use my Relive. It's, I've got it running in the background and then when I get home and upload it later tonight or turn it off, it automatically puts my photos in of where I've been from the day in the order. But you can select and choose, chop them in, change them out if you want to. You can always write where you've been as well. I use it obviously for motorbike, but you can use it for anything and everything. Horse riding, camper vanning, riding your car, walking, skipping whatever you want to do. You can also add other apps in. So if you use other tracker apps, you can upload them and track them into Relive. I don't, but you can. You can also follow um, other people, follow their routes, follow their tracks. Um, you can also set challenges for each other. I don't, but you can if you want. Um, I'd, see, I probably don't use it to the full potential. So go and have a little look, follow my link and see what you think. But you can follow your own routes, you can follow other people's routes. But if you see me doing routes and I've literally gone down there and come back up again, don't follow me because it means it's a dead end. Or Morrison's car park, I've had that today too. But anyway, I'm now at Hemsby. Last time I was here was with Andy. Um, and Sarah actually, but obviously no no um, visit to the seaside would be completely UK without a visit to the amusements. So let's go and see if I can win some pennies. I spent a pound very quickly on two pea machines and then I found this one. But I spent a fiver, won a fiver, that's okay. I was clearly having so much fun, I didn't even realise it was been raining. So now I'm going to get a douche. I mean to get my waterproofs out. Bloody hell. I've made it here. I'm at the race course now um, to meet Lisa. I did want to stop at Sea Pauling and show you the beach, but for some weird reason, I couldn't see Pauling and the race course, like my two stops on my Google Maps. Not Google, whatever. Apple Maps or whatever. And it's taken me right past through Sea Pauling past the beach, out the other end, to here, and then my next stop is back at Sea Pauling, so that's very bizarre. But anyway, me and technology, you know what I'm like. So I want to stop at Sea Pauling because it's Jack's favourite beach. In fact, every holiday when he's come here as a little kid, my mum and dad would take him to Sea Pauling. And uh, she'd say to me, yeah, we've been to Sea Pauling, we've been to Sea Pauling, and I'd like, who's Pauling? I don't even know who Pauline is, yet you're taking him to see her all the time. And then I realised it was C Pauling, P A L L I N G. But on the way through, I did see some signs for an illuminated by, uh, boat um, procession. So that looks quite good. And also the boats for horsey seals. So that's something that was on the bucket list for me and Andy. And unfortunately, Andy didn't make it. We did want to take Arthur on the boat to see the horsey seals. We also wanted to take him to see the elephants at Colchester Zoo, which Jack and Gabs and I did. Um, on Father's Day and we sprinkled some ashes there at the elephants and the other thing we wanted to do was to go to um, Disneyland Paris so we're going to do that hopefully on Jack's next birthday in January um, so no matter where I'm in the world I will come back for that because that's within the plans of things to do so hopefully that will be done. Um, I had hoped to stop for a little um, sleep on the beach this afternoon because I'm feeling really really tired but obviously rain put paid to that. As you can see, I've got my waterproofs on. It got so bad at one point, I had to pull into this side street to take my phone off and tuck it safely away. And of course, straight through a massive puddle. And for the first time since getting back from Ireland, we've got my summer boots on. So very wet feet once again, but hey, I'm used to that now. I really. So I was very tired. I had a lot of riding to do. I've got riding to ride home yet. Um, so I had to stop for a cup of tea. It was a very nice cup of tea at Waxham Barns, but 
hopefully it won't keep me awake hopefully i'm tired enough to sleep well tonight so shouldn't really drink caffeine have nicotine or alcohol or heavy meal or do lots of exercise for six hours before bed you know because it's not good it's all stimulant um so yeah anyway looking forward to seeing lisa i'm looking forward to having some lovely food it is just a castle carvery but do you know what oh, i like castle carvery it's i can get a great big plate of vegetables and it's all nice it's nicely cooked you know it's not your organic but it's a big plate of vegetables with gluten free and vegetarian gravy and yorkshire puddings so that would do me Well, it's been a long day, but I'm now home. PJ's on, my favourite clothing, on my settee, my favourite place to be, other than my bed and my bike as well, obviously. I had a lovely, lovely time catching up with Lisa. It's been a few months. And she actually said to me, or asked me to write a book, another book. And I said, it's funny you should say that, but that's one of the things that's been going through my mind. So... I'm hoping to sleep well tonight because I'm very tired, but my mind's now like being fed. Woo! All my synapses are going ready, ready, ready. So we shall see. But um, lips are sealed in the same way as it was for the other one. And watch this space. Yee! Beautiful sunset tonight. Good night for now. See you in the morning.